Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. Do you need a new live center? Maybe. Uh, today we're going to review the basics of live centers and look at what's out there for a, a wood turner and then you'll be in a better position to make an informed decision because it's a personal decision and it's a function of what you turn, how often you turn, and also what your budget is. Let's get started. All lathes come with, uh, with a live center. Uh, this uh, cone center is the one that came with my Pyromatic 2014, but it's different from the one that came from its big brother, the 3520C. So my big Pyromatic also comes with a 60 degree cone center, but it also comes with the ability to remove that, that cone and use a cup, a cup and ring, uh, a cup or ring, ring center as shown here that's got a three quarter by uh, 10 inch thread that allows a, a, a different accessories to be adapted to it. I, I know I know turners who, are all, who might have used this, gotten a big lathe like this and this this type of uh, live center also comes with the big jets and, and robusts and and uh, I think Laguna. So the, the, the larger more expensive lathes tend to come with a better uh, a better live, live center. But I've known folks that had one of these for a while and didn't even realize you could take off these uh, the cone center, because uh, in many instances the cup center is, is a better choice for what they're turning. My Jet 1014 came with uh, this particular live center, and a lot of live centers, they look, they, they have a lot of similarities, but sometimes they have differences. For example, uh, this one and this one, this uh, Falcon traditional live center from uh, Record Power, uh, they are both uh, cup and uh, or ring ring centers of approximately the same size. I prefer this one, this design, because it, as it has a standoff, a little easier to get in, in here. Uh, on the other hand, this one has a removable uh, center. This one does not. But this one, on the other hand, has two uh, sealed uh, for life precision bearings. This one only has one bearing, and it's, and it's not sealed, so y y it wouldn't necessarily get the same uh, longevity as this uh, more expensive one from from record power. There's a lot of a lot of folks that have centers that don't even realize that the tip can come out. This can be useful when you are, for example, moving a block of wood to to balance it, and every time uh, you bring uh, make an indentation, pretty soon you got several of them, and it and it they tend to slide into each other. So if you take this the the point out and you've got this area, you, it's easier to uh, actually get it relocated. Reloc now, when you're knocking out the center, if you're not careful, you can knock it clean across the room. I suggest getting a block of wood, especially if this hasn't been knocked out in a long, long time where there's dust and crud in there. Drill you about a three quarter inch hole. Uh, this thing will support it, and then you take your, your mallet and give it a little tap or a big tap depending on how long it's been in there and and then the removable tip will come out now you have that same functionality on the one that comes with the large large powermatic it also has a removable tip and uh, it comes with this knockout bar but I've seen most of these knockout bars tend to be all bent when they're used as a knockout bar because it just doesn't have any strength if you have the opportunity and you have one that you can remove the point, if you can get one of these plumbing fittings from, uh, so if you happen to swap out a, a sink fixture in your bathroom or something, this rod out of brass works great. And you can just tap that thing and, and out, it'll, out it'll come. And again, sometimes there's advantages for not having the point, although I don't remove the point very often. Um, yeah. When you put it back in to give it a give it a little tap. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, construction. Basically, these uh, have have bearings. The live center, by definition, has a, a one or more bearings in it. Uh, this particular one is a cheap Chinese I, one I've had for many many years, and I believe it has two bearings, but I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, and it's. They're pressed fit in there, so I can't pull it loose easily without feeling like I could damage it to verify for sure. But this is uh, threaded on there, uh, which which keeps it fairly well sealed. Although there is an opportunity for dust to get in there because this does uh, 
does uh, spin. Now this one spins on the outside. You get uh, some such as the um, Powermatic that has uh, two bearings and it the mechanism spins on the inside uh, as does the, the, the one way uh, which I, I tend to like because you don't have a moving part up, up here uh, where you could actually uh, touch it or, or bump it. Now another aspect of construction, let's talk about the uh, size of the Morse taper. Many lays tend to come with what they call a short Morse taper. Now as a result of that, it does not self-extract in most large lathes. Either one will fit in a mini lathe but if you put this in a large lathe, it'll get, it'll get stuck. And actually, uh, I can see some damage here from early on when I probably tried to pry a screwdriver in between. Let me demonstrate that. So if, if you accidentally stuck one in a small, uh, a, a small, short one in a long lathe, you can always stick a tool in there and give it a, give it a pop. If you're going to use one in a large lathe, although I'm not sure why you would, uh, you could put some type of wooden plug here just to extend it a little bit or depending on how it's made, maybe a, a bolt or uh, something of, of that nature uh, so the quill would, would self-extract. So let's talk about the two basic designs. This, these, are, these two record power live centers, we've got the Falcon a traditional cup and ring and tr traditional 60 degree cone. Uh, they both have uh, two sealed for life bearings and you compare that with say a cheap Chinese one, which frankly has held up fairly well for me, I have to say, but it has come unthreaded with a back plate because it threads in. This one is sealed, uh, where that's not likely that that can't can't happen. So let's briefly uh, compare and contrast the functionality of these two. The cone provides the greatest uh, uh, strength from a single point of contact, and it works if if the uh, surface of the wood is is not perfectly flat. It can act as a splitting uh, wedge, so if you're using very fine brittle uh, brittle wood, it can uh, serve to uh, uh, possibly split it. Whereas this will distribute the strength around the ring. This allows you to get in real close, for example, when you're taking off the tenon of a of a bowl. Uh, whereas this one, you're going to be re restricted. Uh, this one, by distributing the uh, the force over a wider area, it it's less likely to split it, and as a result, this makes it particularly useful if you're doing things such as um, split turning, where you're gluing two pieces of wood with a piece of uh, paper, and you can have the ring cover each each side of of the wood, and is less likely to split it, as as shown in these these projects. But if you don't use those kind of projects, you're not likely to use use this. Let's briefly talk about uh, Live Center systems. Uh, I've used the Technotool Nova system for many years, been very happy with it. Uh, it uses a, uh, a short uh, Morse taper tenon for its, its features. I'm not going to go through all the details of this because I covered it in a previous video and I'll have a link at the uh, end of this video if you want to see the review, but it's got some nice features to it. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Record Powers Carnet Falcon Universal Live Center because I happen to have it and, and some of the things I'll discuss will uh, be reflected in, in other, other systems. But it's a very high quality system uh, with, with seal bearings. It's got multiple tips. They use an interesting way of of the tips instead of a Morse taper they use a rubber o-ring that uh, fastens it very securely and then you use a knockout bar either uh, through the tailstock or, or off off the tailstock e either way um, it's got the, tra the traditional uh, 90 degree or six, uh, traditional 60 degree cone it's also got a uh, multi-tooth step, step uh, type center which uh, gives a, distributes the uh, the load over multiple teeth so it, it won't uh, split split the wood. And an example of of this is um, or an area where this could be very very helpful is if again if you're doing split turnings with paper because it's it's not likely to, uh, to to split. The tip that I really like is this extended detail tip because instead of a 60 degree cone it's got a 90 degree cone and it just it 
it's not quite as strong as the 60, but on the other hand, it doesn't do do the damage. It's give, it gives you standoff, uh, and you know, it, and I find this very helpful where I don't want to do any damage. I don't want to be penetrating into the into the wood. Uh, so I'm, I'm finding this more and more, more useful. Now, the other uh, tip that is useful is the, um, the pen mandle tip. So if you're a pen turner uh, and you're, you're looking at getting a pen mandle, you can either get a cheap Chinese pen mandle at fairly low cost. Uh, you don't know about the quality of bearings or how long it's going to hold up before it starts uh, squealing on you and I want to show you how that works in, in just a moment or you could get a uh, system that has a a tip that serves as a uh, pen mandrel such as this uh, Falcon uh, a Carnet Falcon uh, uh, system so let me show you how that works so when you turn a pen you have the blanks separated by bushings and then typically you take this uh, knurled uh, thumb screw and you tighten these uh, tighten these up uh, so you can they'll be stiff and won't spin when you turn and you bring up the tailstock support there's a little indention here and you just barely bring up the pressure the challenge is if you bring up too much pressure you'll bow this and then you're going to get a, a bad shape on on your pen uh, so it's very sensitive to putting too much pressure on it so the other way to deal with that is to use a mandrel saver type center and that could be a, a cheap Chinese one like like this where this slides over or it could be a a feature for example on on this uh, record record power where it's it's sized to to fit fit the the mandrel and then when you bring it up you're bringing pressure against the bushing and against the piece, but you're not uh, going to bow this uh, piece, or it's much less likely that you're going to wind up bowing it because you're putting the pressure on the actual blanks them, themselves. Uh, so this is faster and it's and it's more accurate. And of course, if you have a uh, some other live system that's adaptable, it might either have that mandrel saver, or you could make one, for example, on this Nova, either out of wood or. Uh, or nylon that will accomplish the, 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 same, the same thing when you bring pressure on it. And of course the systems go, the one that comes with the large Powermatic uh, Laguna Robust One Way uh, that has this 3 quarter by 10, this, this is a very versatile adaptable uh, uh, system as, as, as well for putting on, like I say, uh, the cone. Uh, don't think I mentioned earlier, one of the other advantages of the cone is Anytime you're turning uh, something with a large hole in it, this this helps stabilize it very easily. Such as when you're drilling a hole in a in a ha tool handle, uh, so the cone fits in. That's the only time I would use this cone because this aluminum cone, this particular cone, the aluminum cone, because this is so easily damaged uh, using it as a traditional 60 degree cone because it's aluminum. If you get your tool anywhere near the end of the the piece you're going to damage that that cone so I would only use this in going inside a hole I would not use want to use this traditionally as a 60 degree uh, cone because I think it's kind of use, useless uh, but in terms of a system you use a three quarter by ten uh, nut which is a common size and you can you can adapt any type of uh, make any type of uh, accessory. Uh, the other option is to of course buy a tap and, and drill a hole and, and tap it and you can make whatever fixture uh, that, that, that you need out of, out of a piece of wood. Uh, you can also use something as simple as a golf, uh, golf ball where you've got an uneven surface and, but you just need to provide some, some support. And, and that works. Uh, another another option is to getting a crutch tip of the appropriate size that will fit over. Uh, if you want to use uh, this as a soft touch, where you don't want to damage, you don't want the tip damaging damaging the the work. And of course, the easiest way to prevent the a tip from damaging the work is just use a small scrap of uh, MDF or plywood with a hole in it 
to uh, keep that point from touching if, if all you're wanting to do is bring up some support on the end for, for safety and, and, and for uh, stabilization. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss future uh, videos. If you're a visitor, leave a comment below on one thing you got out of this, this video. And if you missed the uh, video or want to check out the video where I did the review on the Technitool Live Center, you know, click here. If you want to learn how to turn a, a cone, cone center for your existing live center, click on the other video. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back, you hear?